Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking today on this uh, short little video on uh, solving equations uh, with a single variable equations, but um, using the fraction busters um, tool because we've got a couple equations here with fractions in it that we're going to solve. So these problems I'm taking specifically from CPM uh, course 3, CC3. Uh, this is specifically from section 5.2.2, uh, number 5-40. So I have two equations. I'll rewrite them because they're kind of small on that, that page. So we'll do A first. We have X divided by 2 uh, plus X over 5 equals 1, right? So this is my equation x over 2 plus x over 5 equals 1, and I need to solve for x, right? So we know solving for x means get x isolated, where I end up with just the x all by itself, and um, that'll give me my answer. But the thing is, is I've got these fractions that I want to eliminate, so that's this whole idea of, of fraction busters that I want to make sure we remember how to do. Fraction busters. Uh, what fraction busters are is you look for that common denominator. The fraction buster is the common denominator. Okay, so what is the common denominator when I look at these two fractions? Well, I've got a denominator of 2 and a denominator of 5, so my common denominator is 10. So what that means, I'm taking this entire equation every term in the equation and i'm going to multiply it by 10. so i'll show you what that looks like so that's going to be that's going to be 10 times x over 2 plus uh 10 times x over 5 equals 10 times 1 right so i'm taking every one of those terms and multiplying it by 10. So why does this work? So if you look at this right here, this whole number times a fraction, remember with the whole number over one, you could look at it as, well, that's 10 times X, which is 10 X over two, one times two is two. And then that divides out to be just five X. You can simplify it along that way, or you can look right away and say, well, 10 over one times X over five, you can actually simplify, diagonally simplify, right? Divide out a 5, 5 becomes 1, 10 becomes 2, so you end up with just a 2x. So either way you look at it, you have this 5x plus 2x is equal to, and then 10 times 1 is 10. So simplify, now I have 7x is equal to 10. Keep on going, because now I've got to divide by 7 on both sides, and I end up with x is equal to 10 sevenths. When you have a, a, um, a situation where... Um, one number divided by another number, and there's no equal division here, no um, whole number division, leave it as a fraction. So we can call this x is equal to 10 sevenths. All right? So let's look at the next one. The next one, similar question, but um, a few more terms. So we have x over 3 plus x minus 1, the whole quantity x minus 1 divided by 4 is equal to two plus X. So once again, I've got to look and say, I'm gonna do the fraction busters, but I need the common denominator. So the, the, the key word is denominator. Well, there's only two denominators in the whole equation, the three and the four. So the common denominator would be 12. So I'm gonna multiply, once again, I'm gonna multiply every term times 12. So 12 times X plus X over three plus 12 times x minus 1 all over 4. Now notice what I just did as I, I'm going along here. I put parentheses around the x minus 1 because I want to I want to solidify that that is um, that whole expression x minus 1 is divided by 4. And then equals 12 times 2 plus 12 times x. So I'm multiplying every term by 12. Term here, that whole term, that term, and that term all by 12. So now let's simplify. What happens? Well, this 12 over 1 times x over 3, we can cross-reduce. The 3 becomes a 1. The 
12 becomes 4, so now I have 4x. So that eliminated, it busted that fraction. Plus over here, same thing, I can divide or uh, put 12 over 1 and uh, diagonally reduce. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 12 three times. Now here's where it gets tricky. What I have is 3, and I'm going to just write it so we see it, 3 times the quantity x minus 1, right? That 3 that's left on the outside is a multiplier. It's multiplying the whole thing. So I'm going to write it in parentheses to show that, and then I'll distribute. Keep going. Equals 12 times 2 is 24, plus 12 times x is 12x. So let's clean this up some. First thing is, is I do have to distribute that 3 to each of those. So I have 4x plus 3x minus 3. I took that 3 and I distributed it to the terms. Okay. And then this cleans up even further. I can combine like terms. So really I end up with 7x minus, oops, uh, let me rewrite that. 7x minus 3 equals, over here, there's nothing to add or subtract. So I can leave this 24 plus 12x. Now I got to get all my x's on one side and the numbers on the other side. So what does that look like? So I'm going to take and let's see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to subtract 12x from this side, subtract it from this side here. That eliminates the x's on this side. I end up with negative 5x minus 3 is equal to 24. Then I've got to get rid of the 3, so I add 3 to both sides. Eliminates that minus 3, so now I have a negative 5x equals uh, 27, right? And then, let's see, I've got sure we can see this paper here hang on there we go. and then from there now it's divide both sides by negative five right because you've got negative five times x is equal to 27 so you got to divide the ne by negative five to get that x all by itself so x equals well 27 divided by negative five they don't divide evenly so I'm going to rewrite it just as a fraction, negative 27 fifths. There we go. So that is my final answer. Yeah, it's ugly. I mean, you could, if it made more sense, you could put it as a, a mixed number, negative 5 and 2 fifths, or just leave it as a single fraction. All right. I hope that helps.